I, uh, I want to talk about faith tonight, so we'll get right into this. I have, I have some uh, things that I think will be helpful. You know, uh, it's amazing how they, talk, they, they call all the religions of the world faiths. <laughs> and I don't, you know, it doesn't really go along with my understanding of what faith is. I guess, you know, maybe you, but uh, I mean, these, these guys are in the, in, the, in the ground somewhere, you know. Um, Buddha and I don't know Siddhartha or whoever else it was. <laughs> it's like there, there's there's no faith involved. I mean they're just they're they're believing in themselves or something. I don't know. Anyway, because my understanding of a faith is believing in something you can't see. You know, like you know, actually trusting in something. You know, maybe they do. I I, I shouldn't say anything like that. I guess, but just be more understanding. Um, but uh. What makes it possible for you to, when you come up to something or something that we're promised can happen, what, what makes faith actually arise? What enables faith and what disables faith? And I think sometimes we, we, we need to maybe be aware of what disables faith so that we can be, because um, the enemy, that, that's where... He's, he's, a, he's a wily one, and what he's going to do is he's going to go right into the area where you can be affected in a way that you don't even know it's coming because we have our, how many have any weaknesses that you, uh, that's partly what fasting time is about, I think, is to kind of expose some weaknesses, right? Uh, um, so, but, but he knows how to hit us right where it hurts, you know, and we don't even know. Most of the time when we are, our faith is being disabled, we're actually in, in in defense of its disabling. Does that make sense? Uh, because we don't even recognize what it is. So I think it's good to just, you know, to, to say, God, wh- what is it that enables my faith? And what's going to make it to where, you know, because I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm, I'm thinking, why aren't some of these things happening? Why, why am I not? And we talked about this on Sunday, didn't we, about the power of God. This is real. And if we want this, we're, it's, it's going to happen by faith. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And who was, who was saying that? that? That guy that's hollering at a mountain. <laughs> he's, he's shouting grace to a mountain. And, and what it is, it's, it's by the spirit. And so we are believing in an unseen God that can do anything. But he didn't just say that he can do anything. He said we can do things. Isn't that amazing? So, um, you know, there, there's some there's some songs like um, uh, "I'm Going to See a Victory," you know, and I've I've uh, I've I've modified that in my acceptance of that song but this way, okay, <laughs> because because <laughs> to me, uh, I don't want to just plan on seeing something. I need to see it now. So I, I like to think about it this way. Okay, when something comes up that needs a victory, I'm going to see it right when it comes up. Do you see the difference? Because that's what faith is. Faith doesn't say someday in the sweet by and by, I'm going to see something. And I think sometimes we, uh, you know, using the word manifest can be kind of a cop out too. Well, I'm just believing from the manifestation. Well, no, no, we believe we've got it right now. You know, that's, that's actually what faith is. Um, we believe something we can't see, but we see it in another place. And so that's kind of what I want to look at today, because there's an eye of faith that until we're actually seeing through the eye of faith, we're not in faith. Jesus said that if you can just believe all things are possible to, uh, to you when you believe, right? And what are the two examples where he gives that? And then I'm going to have these, these verses. I'm going to bring them up. But um, remember, uh, I don't know how they came chronologically. I forget which uh, way they came chronologically. Somebody will help me out here, I'm sure. But um, Remember, one of them was when the little boy's uh, demon-possessed, and he's getting thrown in the fire and everything else. And, and, and the, the, uh, the disciples come to him, and they say, um, uh, you know, <laughs> you had us out there dealing with all these other things, but when it came to him, we, we can't do this. And they said, what's, what's the issue here? And he said, you know what? 
you can just have a little bit of faith, and that's enough. Uh, and and anything is possible to you. But then he said, but this kind requires prayer and fasting. And, and I'll and I'll get into kind of what my perspective is on, on what that actually means because what what that's given a clue is is that there's something that's that's needed to enable faith, especially when it's a bigger thing that, that comes. What difference does it make? You know, if, if, you're, if you're healing people and you're seeing people get healed, but then you come up against something else and it's like, and, and I, I think there's a key for us here. Uh, and then what was, what was the other one? It was, um, remember Jesus spoke to that fig tree. And it was after that that he had a very similar response to the, they, they said, wow, how'd you do that? That was pretty cool. We'd like to be able to do that kind of a thing. And he said, well, you know, anything's possible to you. You just have to believe, right? So what, it, what, what, what makes that happen? And it, and it becomes very critical. I mean, you know, I, I think a lot of times, again, we can say, oh, I believe. But there's, there's things that come along, I believe, that disable our believers. Things that are natural in our life that we just think that we're, we're I mean, we're just reacting to a reality in our life. And we don't recognize that what we're allowing is the, the disabling of our faith. Okay? So, I think I got it here. All right, let me... Uh, pull this up in a little bit different way where I can see it better. So Matthew 17, 20. And so um, this is this is the little boy. The little boy got and the disciple said, why can't we do this? And he said, it's it's because of your unbelief. And so the, the, the direct correlation is faith is associated with belief. When you believe, you're going to have faith because of your unbelief. So here are these people, that, again, that they were already performing miracles. And yet in this case, he's saying, you have unbelief here. They said, well, where did that come from? <laughs> right? I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you don't even need very much. And, and, and you know, I've seen it this way before. It's like faith isn't an actual, like a gradual thing. It's more like a switch. It's more like it's on or it's off. <laughs> you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting. So when I think about, when you think about prayer, you know, there, there's, <laughs> now it's pretty deep subject in itself, but, but. Uh, let's look at it this way. So, so when you're actually communicating with God, you're not telling him anything he doesn't already know. Uh, the most effective prayer is when you find out what God says about something and you agree with what he's saying. So what I'm seeing on that side of it, it's information. Uh, uh, praise can be prayer. Because what you're doing is you're exalting God in relation to a situation. Does that make sense? And so... Um, what I'm seeing here, when Jesus is given this, sometimes we think, well, man, i got to go pray and not eat. And then I might have some faith. You know? You know? <laughs> but I think he's given a clue here of why they didn't have faith. It's because there wasn't enough of the right kind of information taking place. Communication. Communication. And here's the wonderful thing about prayer. Again, is it's, it's not just trying to persuade God to do something, but it's taking knowledge of him and it's declaring it from a position of authority and affirmation. So what it becomes is it becomes more like a, a, a building of faith, an establishing of faith above something. Um, <clears throat> and then ignoring of the natural is the, is the fasting side. And so what happens, and this is, we're getting to the end of it now, and I'm just finally getting kind of good at this, you know. <laughs> Actually, it went, worked out this morning, you know. It's like, a, uh, it's amazing how your body is, what you can do, you know. You find out, oh, I don't have to have that, you know. And, and you can, you, you, you learn 
and, and that's why I believe they did it regularly. I think it was part of their health, health uh, regimen, you know, because uh, it's, it's actually good for your health in, in different ways. But, but what has to happen is there has to be a learning of how to ignore how you feel about something. Because most of the deception of the enemy is to come in and say, oh, you know, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But, oh, you feel a certain way about something, so you have the right to choose to act based upon that. And this is where faith always goes. It goes to an action. It's, it's not really complete until there's an action. So, but it goes in reverse also. So, so, um, so what he's saying and so I get a vision of these guys, you know, running into this demon-possessed boy. What's happening? All of a sudden, they're seeing something they haven't seen before. And they're, and they're comparing it to Jesus, but they're saying, you know, I didn't even see him do this before yet. This is, this is kind of a new thing. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? You know, it's a lack of information. It's a lack of understanding. It's a lack of, uh, of being able to come. And then on the other side, it's like, it's scary. Their flesh pipes up and says, yeah, that thing might get you. you know? like, I mean, there, there's just other sides of it. And, and, and Jesus, you know, I, I, again, I think that 40 days in the wilderness of fasting was, was actually preparing the Son of God, preparing the Son of God for this same kind of a thing. That he was going through... <laughs> He was going through a lot of different experiences during that 40 days. He was, he was encountering other creatures and other spirits and other things going on during that period of time that he was getting, he was getting to the place where you throw anything at this guy and he's not impressed. His flesh isn't going to respond because he's gotten completely out of listening to what his flesh has to say, right? And he knows what's been said by the scriptures. He's fully aware of that. And, he's, and he doesn't just know it, but he communicates it with his father. See the difference? And how necessary. So they're given a clue here. Well, first of all, you're going to have to really be full of some information. And these are some of the things that we get, how we get faith, right? It's through information. But it's not enough to just get that information. We're going to have to do something with it. And that's where prayer comes along. You can actually activate faith in prayer with information you already know. <laughs> okay? So, but then you have to do something where you get to the place where my flesh doesn't get a voice. I distrust how I feel about anything. And, and, and this is a transformation that is so necessary. And we'll see, especially in these particular areas. Are you good tonight? Okay, so Romans 10 so, so and, and, and we're familiar with this. Faith comes by hearing. And, and, and a lot of times I've heard this and I'm thinking, uh, please read the rest of this. Please read the rest. Because you can't just take one passage of Scripture and get the whole meaning of it. So I've, all, I've often thought about this. You know, sometimes people, they even say this part. They say, and faith cometh by hearing and hearing. And they stop there. See? So you must hear and hear and hear and hear a lot, a lot, a lot, hear a lot, a lot. Do you know that can almost be anti-productive? Because you get insensitive to it, and if you hear it enough and you never do anything with it, you might as well not have heard it at all, right? So it's not just hearing, but hearing that results in a movement that produces a vision of faith. Now, I believe there needs to be a vision of faith that precedes an action of it. And so, you re, let me just read this. I mean, this is really kind of amazing because this is, the, this is supposed to be a pillar of, of how we give faith. And yet, it can also be the opposite. Okay. But not everyone who hears the good news has welcomed it. So he's saying, how, how do we get the good news out? Well, you got to go preach it. People have to hear it. They have to hear it. Blessed are, blessed are the feet of those who, who carry the good news, right? He said, but not everyone who hears the good news has welcomed it. Huh. So Isaiah the prophet said, Lord, who has believed me when I told them? He says, yet faith comes from listening to his good news and the good news about Christ. 
Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word. Can't help but say it in the King James Version when that's what you've been learning it by, right? But, um, but what's he saying? I mean, the whole purpose of putting that in there is to, is to say that it doesn't work to just hear. Do you see that even in front of this? And let's keep going here and look at it a little bit more. But what about the Jews? Have they heard God's word? They are called the people of the book. There, if anybody has heard it, they've heard it. Yes, for it has gone wherever they are. The good news has been told to the ends of the earth. I think it says, and yet they didn't act on it. They kept withholding themselves from responding. It says, God said, come, let's do something together, and they, and they withheld. Why? Because they didn't see what the profit was. They didn't see what the benefit was. They didn't see it by faith. You know, what's, what's really wonderful about Judaism, to me, the rabbis are just really wonderful to listen to. The way they talk, tell stories, and, and you know, I got, to take, I got to take some classes with some rabbis in, in, in college, and it's just really wonderful to hear these things. But you get into the realm of the mind, and you can become very philosophical and feeling like you're figuring everything out. And I'm telling you, as long as you're figuring out anything and not doing anything about it, you are an example that they're given right here. Amen? And it's almost anti-productive to grow up in the church and get used to being able to act a certain way that is completely opposite of what you're hearing. <laughs> so what's really sad about this is hearing is supposed to enable faith. And yet, especially if you start to hear something else, it will, it will corrupt what you're hearing. This is, this is part of the reason why you, you fast. What are you fasting? Well, you can fast some food, but you learn to say, you learn to take every thought captive, and you say, is that from God or not? Because if it's not from God, it's going to disable my faith. Right? And this isn't just, some terrible thing. It's not just like swear words. and you know, It's anything that's not faith. Right? Okay. And this is kind of good, isn't it? All right. So Hebrews 11, 1. And this is, remember, this, this is the, the faith chapter, right? These are all the pillars. And so it does start off here kind of uh, giving you a clue, another clue here. It says, faith is the established ability to see inside what is not seen outside. This is my statement, but I like this. So there's a reason for each one of these words. It's the established, because it is going to be something that you learn to do. There's going to be, be, have to be a removal of some things and the addition of some other things, because until you can see it on the inside as if it's just as real as ever, I think I think I think Larry is a great example of this with some of the <laughs> some of the stuff that he he creates. I mean, when you go into a building, what do you do? You don't just see the building, do you? No, no, you see something else completely. In fact, if you can't do that, it isn't going to get done, right? <laughs> so maybe you can relate to this better than I. Uh, I'm, I'm even doing it here, but but. So what, what faith does is it. it it's, an, it's a developed thing, though. And, and I don't know, when you started doing that as a kid, I don't know, but or when you got a particular job that enabled it or what, you know. But, but, but it is something you learn to do. And in fact, once you've done it once, it ignites the ability to do it in another way, doesn't it? It's like once you, in, in fact, it, you get excited about it, and that's kind of, your juices start to flow and say, well, I want to see some more of this happen, right? <laughs> now, faith is the assurance and one of them says substance. Sometimes I think of substance as being something that I have right now that makes me know that I have something in the future. And, and I, I like this, this, uh, this version of this. Now faith is the assurance that confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Isn't that cool? So it'd be kind of like, uh, you know, buying something online, buying a truck online, and 
And uh, you, know, you know it's yours. In fact, you, you go get in the car and you drive across the country and get it, right? Because it's yours. You know it is, right? <laughs> but if you don't know for sure, you might not get in the car. You might not go. Until you actually act on it, it doesn't even do any good to know that. You have to do something to, to make it happen, right? Um, so, faith has to see something that you cannot see in the natural realm. Or it's not really faith. <laughs> right? It's just seeing something. It's like, I don't have to have faith for my wife. She's sitting right there. Before she came along, I had to have faith for her. <laughs> right? So Romans 4.17. Let's keep going here because we got some more really good stuff. There, so it's not enough to just see, though. It, we must act. And I've been saying this over and over again. Let me, let me go ahead and read Romans 4.17. That's what the scripture means when it says, I have made you the father of many nations. He is our example and father. For in God's presence, he believed that God can raise the dead and call into being things that don't even exist. So this is how amazing God is. And he's, he's our father. He's our example. Um. He doesn't even need anything to go from. He doesn't even need a room that needs to be changed. He, he, he can imagine something that hasn't ever even been before. He says, let there be light when there's only been darkness. <laughs> he throws stars up in the sky when there's never been one before. You know, it, 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 he, 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 <laughs> he, he makes a German short hair when there's never been one by. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> he, he's so... <laughs> Actually, you know, these sea creatures and stuff, some of these things that nobody's ever even found yet, and all of a sudden they find them and say, well, you know, that was God doing that. You know, he, he makes things that, that aren't even to the point where people have to come up with evolution to try to explain that. I'm sorry. It's a lot easier to, for me to believe that God says, and it comes to be, right? But the principle here being, not God doesn't just have an idea. He doesn't just see it. He speaks it. And then it comes to pass. So there's this need for an adjusted vision, but then an action that follows it. And words will proceed. They'll be a part of it. Okay, James 2.26. There has to be an action or there is no faith. It doesn't matter how much vision you have. It doesn't matter how much. You, so, a big part of what the enemy wants to do is disable the action. Just don't act on it. Just, especially if, if you've not been successful before or you've seen somebody else not being successful. You know, this is the danger when people pass away in our life when we've been praying for them. You know, you say, well, <laughs> or you change your theology, you know. Uh, I'm going to just say that, that maybe God will if he feels like it today or something. You know, no, that's why you disable how you feel. You see how there has to be the combination of this. You have to disable how I feel completely. And now I only go on information that's reliable. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. There has to be a response. So this is why I'm so much into when we present the word of God on a Sunday morning. Did you know it's almost like a slap in the face of God if you're not talking about it later? If you're not doing something verbally to add your faith to what you heard. Amen? There needs to be something set. You're, you start declaring things to the world around you that's been modified by the information you've got from, from the Word. Amen? Or else... God gave you a life-changing word, and you did nothing with it, and so there's no activation of it in your life. You have to do something with it. So, again, what is a, a faith enabler? Action. And the faith disabler? No action. You just don't do anything with it. You know, it's kind of like there, you can sin. You can do some sin and, and really hurt somebody really bad. 
or you can, you know, do something perverted or whatever else. Or you can know something that should be done, just not do it. And I think God sees this with, with faith in a big way. He said, you don't realize how much good. It's not just for you. It's what you, you, what's going to happen through you. It's like Jesus going around healing people. It wasn't for him. Well, they, he, he, they needed to believe in him. But he, he had compassion on all these people. What would have happened if Jesus would have just not activated his faith? You know? How selfish is that? How selfish is of it is how selfish is it of us to not do something with the with the word that we've been given because part of what's not happening is we're not being established in an ability it doesn't because it has to become a part of our natural response you know this with with baseball it's amazing to me how these guys play baseball it's hard for me to watch, I'm sorry, but nothing happens for the longest periods of time. But what's amazing to me, and par partly what makes this even more amazing, is that nothing happens for the longest periods of time. And then all of a sudden, something happens. And boy, they better be there. They better be there. That ball's coming, and I don't know how fast it comes, but, but it's coming, and sometimes they don't even have a chance to get their glove down there. They're going to have to barehand it. And you know, they can't be thinking. They can't be thinking about this. How do they do that? Because they've done it over and over and over and over again. It's a natural response. It just comes out of them, you know. And, 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 and they, can, they can roll on the ground and still be laying on the ground and still throw a clear over it. It's like, where did that come from? It came from being established in that. It's a... Over and over again. I mean, those those guys are crazy talented too. But but <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, and what we have in faith is on such a higher level than even that. And it's we're not just we can't just say we believe and we're not doing anything. You know. <laughs> That's why Jesus said these signs will follow those that believe. And then he said they will. They will do something. They will do something with what they believe. Amen? It's not just something that's going to randomly, oh, look at there. Somebody rose from the grave when I walked by. No, it's a <laughs> no you're going to be a part of it, right? Because you actually believe this. <laughs> so, Luke 6.45. You can only act on what's been stored, though. So, and this, this is why the information part becomes very critical, okay? So Luke 6, 45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, uh, forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. We're familiar with that, right? But how are you going to be able to speak things in faith if you're not putting things of faith in? And so it becomes a... This is not just a religious repetition. This is the ingestion <laughs> of the life of God <laughs> into the place from which it's not going to be contrived. It's going to be somebody reaching down and barehanding a baseball because that's what they know how to do, and it's their natural reaction. Right? And he said, you can't help what's going to come out. You can tell Right away, where somebody is in their faith by what's coming out of their mouth. Especially in the time of difficulty. <laughs> right? Especially in the time when, when they're going through a trial of some kind, when they're challenged in some way, because what's been put in is what's going to come out. And that's why faith does come by hearing, but what are you going to what you've been hearing becomes very critical. And what you've been acting on with that steadily is so necessary because it's going to be what comes out of you at the time of need. Amen? <laughs> Hopefully this isn't getting too complicated. I'm trying to make it like simple. It's just a couple things, right? Just some information. And what are you doing with it, kind of? Really? Right? For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Okay, so Philippians 4, 8. 
So a faith killer is something other than good storage, right? This, this for the one who's actually, and, and this, is, this is why this, this is not something that we just determined to do on our own. This is not a religious project. Uh, I, I love, you know, uh, the concept of making your life about worship. And having the concept of worship, not just a song, you know, that you bow or, or you clap your hands, or, uh, but more that you are aware of the presence of Jesus wherever you go. Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you till the ends of the earth. And one of the biggest faith things you can begin to do is actually believe that and care about what's coming into your head and out of your mouth because you know he knows every thought that you're thinking. <laughs> so what makes this wonderful is that now this is a hard project to only think good thoughts. It's something you can't do without the Spirit. You can't do without relationship. But I guarantee you, you get around the right person, you hang out with them long enough, and you're going to start talking like them, and you're going to start thinking like them. You're going to be affected by them because you've been with them all the time. You cannot help but have different thoughts when you really believe you're in the presence of Jesus all the time. <laughs> and, and, and what's really wonderful about this is you're being taken to a place of faith that's unstoppable at the same time. <laughs> Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Now, what it doesn't say well, you know the other verse that says, and take every thought captive. What are you doing? You're saying, does it qualify? Because it, if it doesn't qualify here, I know where the source is. And it's the faith disabler that's trying to get in. <laughs> and again, we're going to need the Holy Spirit to help us even with dis determining which thoughts we've gotten used to thinking. Because we've gotten, we've, been, we've gotten used to the wrong technique. <laughs> we've gotten used to not making it to first base with a, with a throw. We've gotten used to those other things as if that's just who we are. And that's, don't you tell me that. Don't, uh, you're, oh, you're con condemning me? No, 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 your, ma your mouth is. You know, <laughs> your, your actions are, your lack of fruit is. You know, uh, Jesus said, you know, the, the tree's going to bear some fruit. And you can tell whether you've been in the vine <laughs> or you've been in the wine. No, it's like, it's like <laughs> you're going to be able to tell, and everybody else will too. All right? Because this is what we've been given to live. We've been given faith. And where does faith come? By what you're thinking on and, and what you've been speaking on, acting on. <laughs> and either it's God or it's not. And, and, and that's why there has to be this, okay, I don't really care about how I feel anymore. Because how I feel has really let me down. You know? And I would rather go with what God says and completely become suspicious of how I feel. <laughs> you know? Okay, another faith killer is co condemnation of offense. So this is one of the biggest things that, that when there's, if, and what is that? That's information. Sometimes it's true, but sometimes, most of the time it's perceived. Condemnation of offense. Yeah. So when I say condemnation of offense, and, and the, part of the reason for this is, is what offense does is it puts condemnation on the one that feels offended. It's impossible to feel, to be offended and not feel condemned because your own spirit is telling you that this is not right. 
what you're doing is you're putting condemnation on somebody else. And in the process of that, your own judgment is putting judgment on your own spirit. I know this sounds like a little bit of a lot, but what it's doing is it's compromising your your faith in God, in the source of the good things, in the source of the, for one thing, it, it's not good information. Because love doesn't even take any thought of a wrong done. And that's our source. Uh, I mean, that that's one of the, the filters. That's one of the litmus. If, 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 if you're being offended, it's not coming from God. And it doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter how bad it is. You know, I've heard even Christians say this. Well, I'm just not going to let them treat me that way. Well, there's a way of not letting them treat you that way. But first of all, you have to have your heart in the right place. And we're going to see how this is because I think this is really cool. All right. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So 1 John 3, 21 through 22. Beloved, if our heart condem- does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. So faith has to have confidence towards God, right? So, if our heart doesn't condemn us, we have confidence. And whatever we ask, and we receive from him. That sounds like faith, doesn't it? Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Okay, so uh, uh, let's, let's keep going here. So, when Jesus is the greatest example against offense. When Jesus was on the way to the cross, how offended could he be? The very people he's laying down his life for, spitting on him, hollering at him, telling him stuff. And look at what he does that keeps him out of offense. Faith. Faith. We look away from the natural realm. What? That's how I feel about something, isn't it? (laughs) And we fasten our gaze on Jesus who birthed faith within us, and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. Don't you like that? His example is this, because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his. He endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. So what did he do? There was a natural vision for him to see. He did not see that. He did not look at that because that's not faith. What he saw, he saw every one of them redeemed. He saw every one of them complete. He saw every one of them in Christ, and it made him joyful. What was he doing? He was forgiving. He was forgiving on the way to the cross. How do you forgive? I'll get ahead of myself just a little bit. How do you know you've forgiven? I know there's different approaches and there's different things, but I saw something in this that I think is very powerfully connected to faith for us. You know you've forgiven when your vision of somebody now is them in Christ. And that's all you declare. Does that make sense? Because now what you're doing is you're free of condemnation. That's what, it says, this is our example of faith. Jesus going to the cross has more reason to to be offended than anybody else. And offense would have disabled his purpose on the cross. Offense disables our ability to believe God for anything. Why? Because our heart is being condemned every time we offend or we're we're being offended. (laughs) Okay. Does this make sense? Are, are, are we together on this? Let me just keep going because, man, I think this is so critical. It's so, it's so helpful, too. Because how, how do we see somebody different than what we're, what we're seeing in the natural? But we look to Jesus. How did he do it? He saw them in the, in the spirit. He saw them restored. He saw them complete. And when he spoke about them, that's all that came out of his mouth. What did he do? He, not only did he see them there, but he acted upon that same vision. And it took him all the way to the cross. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? So Mark eleven twenty two, 22. Confidence is directly related to forgiveness. It's known when there's joy in the vision. So here's how you know when you're actually into forgiveness. Is when you're glad about how you see somebody now. 
Does this, does this make sense? Isn't it? Why? Because it's really hard to have faith for a mountain to move when you can't have faith to see somebody in Christ. And this is how we establish this. And man, we have a lot of opportunity to do it, don't we? Every day. This is where I say the enemy comes in. And this is one of the biggest ways. You know, Cain, you know, he just got offended. He thought he was acting correctly. I mean, if you asked him, he didn't feel like he was out of line. But what did he do? He's the firstborn. He should have been, he should have had the inheritance. And not only did he lose his inheritance, he lost his brother by his own hand. Because <laughs> what does the enemy do? You're no longer in a realm of faith. You're no longer in a realm of helping somebody when you get into offense. So there has to be, it's one of the biggest things he does, especially in the church. And this is one of the biggest powers we have. If we actually believe that we've been forgiven, we've been set free, mercy has come upon us. And how has it come on us? Because when, when, when we were dead in our sins, Christ died for us. And, and, and everything he says about us is good, tr- uplifting. He's the glory and he's the lifter of our heads. When? When we're good? It's especially wonderful when we're not. Right? But, but our faith is directly connected to that. And we don't get it. See, I, I, I see that the part of the power that we want in our life is being disabled and we don't even know it. Because we get used to fielding the balls this way. <laughs> and we're never going to make it to first until we learn how to do it right. <clears throat> have faith in God. God. Have God's faith. For surely I say to you, whosoever or whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, this is the fig tree example, does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things which he says. He, 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 it will be done. He will have whatever he says. This is how we completely deflect and get victory over offense. We receive the forgiveness that's ours in Christ. And now we don't just see somebody like that. We start acting upon it. Because remember, faith is not complete. It's not alive until there's an action associated with it. That, and we've been given so many promises in the word that say who we are. How many love those things that that say who we are in Christ? And they're not just for us. They're for whoever offended us. And while they're in their sin, while they're in their, while they're treating you the worst, you can pull out those same scriptures that you love talking about yourself, and you can begin by faith, declaring them over them. And you know that that can take some. That's a bigger leap, but it's it can be more effective because it's what what it's actually doing is say, oh, you really believe this, huh? It's not a just about you. Oh, you really believe this. Oh, so then maybe you're. Faith can rise in other areas, too. (laughs) See how necessary this is? Okay, let me keep going in this. Therefore, I say to you, whatever whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. It says, when you pray. Now, this next part, a lot of times I thought was when you get done praying, but I don't think so. I think it's when you're in the middle of praying. When you're in the middle of talking about something that you need in your life, you make sure that offense isn't disabling the very faith that would get that thing for you. And and whenever you stand praying, not when you're done, not when you're sitting down when you got all done, right? No, when you're standing there praying, having done all the stand, stand, you're still standing there praying. First, one of the top things he says to make sure that Satan isn't disabling any faith you might have by something you're holding against somebody else. Because this is how we come to God in the first place, is the removal of offense between us and God. And that's by faith. We come into the presence of a most holy God, and we say, forgive me. And we actually believe that he does. And yet we can hold something against somebody else. (laughs) If you have anything against anyone... Forgive him 
that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Now, that last part of that, I really believe, is our perception of the whole process. Because as long as you're holding something, your perception is that you're not forgiven either. That's why I say that the the biggest offense is the self-condemnation that you have. Because your own heart is condemning you. You're judging out of line. Okay? <laughs> is, this, is this bearing fruit? Making sense? I believe it's good. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Okay, let's go to Hebrews. I just want to end with this. Sorry I'm going a little bit over here, but this is good. Hebrews 10, 38 through 39. And my righteous ones will do what? Live, live, live. And I think this is the key. This has to be that, that we, you know, even, even me in seeing this, I'm thinking, God, thank you so much for this information. Aren't you grateful for the information that we get from the Word of God? I mean, it's like, how do we live without it? Well, we don't. Not really <laughs> in Christ, we don't. You know, but it's like, but... We don't live without it if we get it and still don't live with it. You know? We have to do something with this. And everything about our relationship with God is not an event. It's a, it's a breath. It's a, it's a movement. It's, a, it's everything that we are. Isn't this encouraging, though? I'm thinking, wow, there's a lot of possibilities here. <laughs> And I believe there's all kinds of mountains to be moved. So this is what changes you. And this is what, where I got started with this, though, is, is what happens to that person that's in front of a mountain that's fixing to move because he's going to speak to it? What has prepared him for that moment? You know? A life lived with disabled faith killers. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, okay, so you don't wait till you get to the mountain to stir this up. No, even while you're sleeping at night, you're deflecting thoughts that don't come from God. You're not allowing somebody to offend you. Or when they do, you begin to deactivate Satan's tentacles by speaking faith words over them. Amen? And here's the wonderful thing about that. We don't ever stop believing for a lot of things in our life. We just keep believing. I, how many believe you're going to heaven? You didn't give up on that like yesterday or something? <laughs> I'm believing my kids are completely restored. We have some promises for that, don't we? Do I always have affirmation for that? Man, I, I've been challenged with that <laughs> before. <laughs> but what I do, I keep, sp- when I'm in faith... <laughs> What I think is really wonderful is, is God doesn't condemn us in this either. Isn't it, isn't it really cool? Because, I mean, we fail in this big time. Did you know that anything that isn't a faith is actually sin? It's not just squeaking by and God forgiving you and grace is wonderful because you just, you know. No, we're supposed to live by faith. He says, my righteous ones live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who does what? And it's, it goes back to faith comes by hearing. And what it said about the, the Jewish people is it said they, we, they drew back from living this way. And he said, God says, I do not like that at all. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them. Is that my ham? <laughs> he says, I do not like it. Why? Because it's disabling faith in them. It's disabling from them the the very thing I did for them in Christ from being experienced in their life. Right? And and this is wonderful. This is the statement that we make even when we might be doing that to a little bit extent. We say, but that's not me. That's not me. I'm going to make a faith statement here. That's not me. Right? Right? Just because you're, you're experiencing something in your life does not mean you have to affirm it by what you say. <laughs> Even if you're experiencing a sickness, 
There's scripture in the Old Testament that actually says, and the inhabitants will not say, I am sick. They won't say that. Why? Because God says something else. I don't, I don't, I don't depend on how I feel about something. Right? It's very hard to lean on what God has to say if we don't put in what God has to say. That's why we have to live there. So how do we live by faith? We live hearing his words, confirming them from our mouths, and then becoming very resistant to how we feel about anything. And every time you say, no flesh, this is what I'm doing, no mind, this is what I'm thinking, and you actually affirm that with an opposite action, you're establishing a vision of faith that can see the room the way you want it, that can see those things. And you get up in front of a mountain, and now you don't even see that mountain. You see a plain because you've been living in this on a regular basis. Until you can speak to a thought, the mountain ain't going anywhere.